What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about autofocus settings within the Canon M50, kind of when and where you would want to use these different settings, the pros and cons of those, and also most importantly, how to get to those settings and move these things around. Currently the Canon M50 offers about three primary modes of focusing and all three are fantastic for different situations, but you need to know when you should be using one versus the other. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. But other than that, Let's dive into this thing. So as I mentioned, you basically have three primary modes to choose from. You have the autofocus with face tracking, which does exactly what it says. It finds a face in the scene and it tries its best to follow and track with that face the entire time. Now, the majority of the time that I'm filming YouTube videos, that's the preference that I use. Right now I'm using single point autofocus because I want to talk about that a little bit more today because there's more to know about zone and single point than there is autofocus with face tracking. But let's talk about the the other two settings a little bit more in depth. So with the single point autofocus, currently I just have a little box that I could see on my viewfinder. And as long as I keep my face or whatever it is that I want to have in focus within that box area, it's going to focus that. So now with face tracking, one issue that I have is if I want to focus on my hand and I move it up here, a lot of times it won't focus in on my face or my hand or whatever other object it is very well because it's looking for a face, not an actual object. But with single point, literally whatever you put in front of the camera here, it's going to focus in on that. And so that's one example of why you might want to use this single point autofocus. The other thing that's neat that I'll show you here in a minute, you can actually move that focus point around. So it doesn't have to be just in the center of the screen or just wherever. You can actually move that to focus on different areas, which could be fantastic if you have a subject really close up and maybe one really far away. That way you could choose which object you want to focus in on. And as fast as this camera works with its dual pixel autofocus, you don't have to worry about super long lag times between focusing on one subject to another. Now, one thing I did fail to mention early on, all of that we're talking about today is assuming that you're shooting in 1080p and not shooting in 4K. And the reason that I say this is one, in 4K, you lose that dual pixel autofocus feature, which is a huge con, I believe, in the 4K. But I mean, you have the amazing manual mode with focus peaking, so why not do that? But that actually is going to be for another video, and if you'd like to see that one and not miss out on it, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also in 4K, not only do you lose the dual pixel autofocus, but the focusing capabilities that you are left with, at least in the auto modes, aren't really the strongest, so I wouldn't recommend using autofocus in 4K. So for the sake of today's video, we're all shooting in 1080 at least. You can always upscale it to 4K and try to make it look a little better. Now the zone focusing is very similar to the single point auto focusing, but you have a larger area on your screen that you can have, you know, the focus in. So instead of having this little tiny little square box, you get a much larger box area and that is kind of your zone. Think of it as kind of like literally like the word says, single point, or a zone. And that's essentially how that works out. Now that's if you've got more things in a space that are showing movement. So say you're at like a sporting event or you've got something with a lot of action, a lot of movement, that way the camera can focus in on that area of movement and try to get the focus on that section. And that's kind of what the zone section works for. Works really well in photography if you're shooting like sports photography, maybe groups of birds flying by. I know there's a lot of bird watchers out there and just stuff like that. I personally don't ever use the zone focusing because again with the type of work that I do it just I, I don't need it I single point works great and the face tracking works great so that's really the only ones that I use there now really briefly I want to hint on when you would use these certain modes in photography and kind of my personal preferences towards that and then I'm going to tell you about some super cool little features that you can add into these different autofocuses so with photography if I am using an autofocus mode I prefer single point autofocus and that's because typically I'm shooting a single subject where I can just focus in on one specific spot now, if I'm shooting a large landscape that has a lot of things that I want to have in focus, I could also consider the zone. But for the most part, if I'm shooting stationary subjects like that, I'm going to shoot in manual mode and use the focus peaking because I like to have a little bit more control over where everything's focused other than the camera trying to decide that. Because maybe there's a specific tree way off in the distance that I want to focus on specifically, single point, 
and not a wide variety or a bunch of trees and the camera might think that I want those instead and then I get home look at my photo at like 100 or 200 percent and realize that one single tree I wanted was a little soft whereas everything else was super sharp so that's why I use single point autofocus I never really rely on any type of face tracking focusing for that especially if I'm shooting portraits again I'm going to shoot manual mode I'm going to take my time or I'm going to use the single point and that's pretty much it with photography it's very similar to video the only thing is is on video I like to face tracking with servo autofocus and if you don't know what servo means it basically means it continuously will track whereas you have a one-off option too so it will focus only on that particular shot and then it's done and then it moves to the next one that's between servo on and servo off so now the last part of this video let's get into some cool little features that you could do one of which especially in the photography setting is you can do a tap to shutter so basically what that means is is you can look on your viewfinder see what area that you would like to have in focus simply tap on the shutter in that area and it's going to find area for that spot as well as take the photo so and you can interchange those different things as, as you want so if you don't want it to actually take a photo but you just want to use your just use your LCD screen as a way to move that focus around you can do that as well I kind of prefer that that way I'm not accidentally taking a bunch of pictures and taking more time off my hands I can simply just use the LCD screen to navigate to where I want my focus point to be let it go hit the shutter button and bam we've taken a photo so the way that you're going to find those you're actually going to go into your menu settings you're going to go into where the little camera icon is it's kind of the red section and you're going to scroll over until you see the tap to shutter options and things like that I believe it's in listing number five here and then you just go down you either enable these things or you disable them and that's it now feel free to play around with these settings and see what you like best see what you can you know come up with as far as what works for your particular shooting style just because I say something's cool or I use something doesn't mean it's going to work the best for you you might like something else because your shooting style is different and that's how that works and that's pretty much all I got when it comes to uh, the automatic settings in a Canon M50 I think it does a swell job of what it does as far as auto focusing I've never had any issues I've never had any concerns out of it and I'm quite happy with the way that Canon has set up their auto focusing I think paired with the ability to do manual focus is a very powerful tool and resource that we should all learn about and just kind of get some practice with because honestly that's what's going to make everything work the best. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you would like to see more videos like this, talking more in depth about the Canon M50, and a lot of these things can be applied to a lot of other DSLRs as well, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Leave some comments in the comment section below about your favorite settings to use with the Canon M50 and some of your experiences with that. And above all else, be sure to create something new today.